let's chat about the role of product in luxury advertising. Now, it's common for luxury advertising contain, to contain the most famous celebrities, right? I'm thinking Lil Nas X, Michael B. Jordan, Kate Blanchett. But you've been saying that oftentimes the product can be the real star. Yeah. What do you mean by that? Well, the the fact is, is that fashion and luxury brands have cool, amazing, beautiful products that also have a lot of history with them in a lot of cases. And people are interested in seeing those, seeing those products. So, you know, this again dates back from my time at Google, but also in my work with JMA and Brain Sites, like the when we when the product has a heavier role where it, it feels like almost a supporting character in the story that's when the ads do really well when we're trying to sneak product in and almost make it a secondary piece that's the, there's just a drop in effectiveness mm -hmm. and depending on what your goal is the the role of products should actually increase um depending you know if it's in the conversion space or what have you but the best example of this is actually with a client of mine with david yearman and we tested a batch of stuff at the beginning of the year um a batch about 10 different ads and there's this really interesting comparison between two ads that starred Scarlett Johansson. Um, both beautiful, really, really lovely, like the, the look and visual aesthetics of it were great, but they were, they were markedly different in the story in that one just featured Scarlett the whole time wearing the product. The other opened in the first 10 seconds, zeroed in on the necklace and the charm rather than her. So you the first 10 seconds of the ad, all you're seeing is this beautiful product and it's on somebody, but you don't know who it is. Mm -hmm. And the difference in effectiveness and engagement was through the roof when it came to the one that waited to reveal that it was Scarlett Johansson wearing that piece. Mm -hmm. And that story is not just a one-off anecdote. That is a reflection of what we see when it comes to advertising effectiveness with luxuries, that the product can play an equal or even bigger role than the celebrity who's wearing it. And in a lot of cases, celebrity becomes a canvas for the product. And that yeah. the thing that the celebrity is best to do is almost to, in some cases, kind of pull the customer along. I see that beautiful product. I know somebody's wearing it. Yeah. I just don't know who, and I'm going to stick around and see it. And then by the time you get past six seconds into 10 seconds, all of a sudden you're locked into the story, dating back to 2019 through COVID into now, the best luxury ads feature the product in a, in at least a supporting role, but sometimes a starring role. I Amazing. So, I mean, you, you, you kind of beautifully painted that picture. Do you think in that opening, you know, you said it was a really strong hook. You think, you know, people were, were, were really drawn in by that. What do you think is happening in people's heads? It's you know? a great example of the two plus two of storytelling, where it's like, don't tell them it's four, tell them it's two plus two and let them figure it out. It's like, yeah. you know, someone really dope is wearing that piece. Yeah. But you got to stick around to see it. And like that, what you're doing when you hire a celebrity is to make people interested in the ad. And in this case, the way the story was written is that it was better to wait to show yeah. Scarlett and to utilize that tease as the way to get people in the ad. You're opening up a gap in people's knowledge or in, 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 in people's understanding. And then you're kind of given the, the license to sort of fill that in, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, like and when it comes to like hooks and this is we've we've talked about this a lot, giving them a puzzle to solve. Yep always going to be a way you're you know when you think about culture now and like entertainment now so much of it is built in predicting what's going to happen next you know yeah. you know with succession is the it wasn't about watching succession it was watching succession so you could participate in all the podcasts that followed it like <laughs> you know and people talk about it, oh, yeah. I did this and like there's an element of that that we want in our ads that you know if this you know most advertising is is avoided you know mm -hmm. most people want to get back to whatever the thing they're doing is so there's it makes a lot of sense that you would borrow from what is you know happening in the in, in storytelling in other places and this idea of you know letting people participate and ha giving them something to solve it makes total sense that it would work in advertising as well yeah huge now, obviously, in the Yerman example, Scarlett Joe, like, you know, famous star, um, probably spent a lot of money, you know, on that uh, on that spokesperson. Is, is there an appropriate balance that you've seen between product 
and spokesperson star in an ad like that? Like, it, give, give us some perspective on that. I would say it's always going to be a recipe rather than a prescription. So, you know, there, you know, I, if you're cooking, you can have your, you know, your cookbook, but you're always going to adapt based upon what you have in your pantry versus what your palate says is good or not. And I think every ad is going to be like that. The thing that advertisers can do and luxury and fashion can do is to understand when they are writing the brief, when they're casting is that, how is this person going to support the product and the brand? So you think about some of the work I've done with Coach, like we partnered with them starting in 2020, no, 2021, excuse me. Um, and I've worked with them periodically up until now. And the thing that we've always really focused on is they ha always cast so well. They are, as far as inclusivity goes, they are doing it as good as anybody in the business and it reflects in their business. Um, you know, they have continued to grow through 2022, 2023. Their earnings call just came out. And even in a really tough time for premium and luxury fashion, Coach is still a, a beacon of growth, even within that tapestry business. So the fact is they're doing a great job in that area. The thing that we keep seeing is that whenever we tested ads 2021, 2022, people always told us they wanted to see more product. Mm -hmm. um, now a Michael B. Jordan spot, one of my favorite things I've ever worked on was for their, their platform called Coach TV. And it was a uh, Michael B. Jordan starring a Shaft. And great spot, the visual was so great, really vintage, the branding and the typography was just on point. Um, but we tested it. And one of the things we do when testing is like, we look at how it performs in market as the most important thing, but we want to understand why it performed that way. So he said, you know, what, what about this spot did you like? And they gave us the answers, but we give them options to tell us what they didn't like. So, you know, what, it, what, did, what did you want to see more of in this ad? I wanted to see more product. Mm -hmm. Pieces are beautiful. And when you think about for fashion and lux, like you guys spend, this is, these, this is what you're selling, but also think about all the details. When you are talking about a collection, mm -hmm. let some of that come through. Let yeah. some of that come through in your advertising. One of the, you know, we, you know, they were doing a, a parody, you know, as an homage, um, I should say, um, to a movie. Like instead of saying starring Michael B. Jordan, maybe you just say starring and then you put the product name. Like mm -hmm. little things yeah. like that can change yeah. everything because instead of looking at his face, you're now looking at the bomber jacket that he has on. And I think mm -hmm. those are the recipe that, the, that when I say recipe, that's that's sort of what I mean is like, what is what is the story you're trying to tell and how can product be a part of it? And, and does that mix change if the product is new versus a classic? When we've looked at fashion and luxe, the ads that tend to be more effective are the ones with classic products in it. Mm. So again, we'll, we'll, the coach is just a good example of this. So, and this, this has been the one that me and their CMO have talked a lot about, like in each, in each campaign, you can tell them, you can see them going a little bit further. Mm -hmm. And what's interesting is like with their tabby campaign. So tabby is a very, it's a handbag that I think was launched in the seventies and they relaunched it, but it, it still had the DNA of the classic. And what you've seen is that they actually just said, you know what, we're going to put this front and center and we're going to we're going to tap into the heritage, but we're going to have, you know, the proper talent. But the story is told through the prism of the bag. Luxury brands can feel comfortable, should feel comfortable with saying we don't need a new product to talk about product. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. If I'm Burberry, I can hear about that trench all day long. Um, you know, cause there's uh, the most, most luxury brands, there is a, like, if you're lucky enough to have one of those classic products, a lot of times the collections and that over the years, they always feel connected to that hero product. You mm -hmm. know, trench is a great one, but every brand has like kind of those things they keep going back to. So I would say it's not necessarily either or, but don't be, don't be always seduced by having to talk about the newest, latest and greatest or actually eschewing product if it's not new. Even if it's a yeah. classic, uh, it can really drive effectiveness in, in the work. There's a reason why those products are timeless. Yeah. You know, and that can be, especially with new, you know, if you're talking to new customers, younger customers, like why not utilize product to provide a window into the history of the brand? Yeah, there's something interesting in that, right? Like just rooting, rooting to something that's classic. There's a piece of nostalgia in there. There's yeah. timeless craft. 
well, the you know, nostalgia there's a permanence piece. there in yeah, an era of, of morality, right? Well, the, the the nostalgia piece with product is interesting too because we that's another thing we've tested. This was with Puma, but they had their 50th anniversary of the the Clyde or the Suede. Yeah, and, you know, the Clyde was the first sneaker named after an athlete. Like the, he was the Clyde, Walt Clyde Frazier played for the Knicks for 10 years. Um, one of the, you know, now he's a, now he's a play by, he's an announcer for the team now, but they had a 50th anniversary. And like, the question was, is like, one, can we use the story of the product to create a feeling of nostalgia in the audience? And two, does that feeling of nostalgia have any value with a younger audience that wasn't even, that wouldn't know who this person is and definitely wasn't around when the product was developed? And one, yes, the product can be used to create a, a feeling of nostalgia in the audience. And two, it absolutely helps connect with Gen Z. Um, yeah. We've been looking at the new nostalgia where it's not necessarily connecting to a reference point that you remember. It's more so creating a feeling and a, almost a feeling of stability, comfort, mm -hmm. escape. Yeah. Anchoring. Um, anchoring, yeah. absolutely. And to, to when, when you know something's been around for a long time, there is a certain comfort in that it's experience in a way and so Ooh, it was really yeah exactly and i think that's what's been exciting because a lot of times brands are always looking to connect with younger consumers is like tell them about the story of your classic product like yeah. um you know tell them about that dive into your archives yeah well that's what we did with puma like puma cool. the, the asset that we tested was a two-minute pr spot that had a less less than a thousand views on their on their channel mm -hmm. we said hey like something there's something good here why don't we instead of trying to shoot something new why don't we test this and then we can utilize the learnings to influence the brief for the for all time campaign which was that 50 years um celebration and we just reworked it and uh, amplified the the feeling of nostalgia through the visual effects through the music and then just layered in a few more product and brand cues and all of a sudden you had a two minute pr spot that became a 90 second best in class asset and for brands that do have that do have an archive don't be afraid to go into that archive to use it to connect not only with your existing customers but to grow the uh, the customer base um with younger audience i was just reminded as you were going through like the you know the pr piece like the johnny walker man who walked around the world right Great one. like classic one i think that was actually originally done for uh for a sales conference or a marketing conference by the agency, but it but it was so well received that they were like, we should release this more broadly, mm -hmm. and it went gangbusters. Yep. Um, very cool. This has been amazing. Um, you're a legend. Uh, <laughs> like, you know, obviously anybody in this space, you know, luxury goods advertising should be working with Jeff Minor Advertising to, you know, push their brand forward. Any any last words you want to share, my friend? I would say uh, I've referenced a lot of examples throughout our conversation, but most of the learnings and the insights and the you know, the path to effectiveness was was carved through experimentation. The culture moves too fast. Things change too fast to always be at the tip of the spear when it comes to this. But through experimentation, we can do our best to catch up, whether that's product, whether that's you know understanding the role of product in your story, whatever it is. Um, testing and learning and knowing that you can pivot and evolve when you see if something's working or not working. The enemy is is not trying new things. Um, mm -hmm. the, this isn't the Mad Men era where you lock in a campaign and that's what you're going to be doing. Anything can be evolved, changed, tweaked, and, in, and it can be done in a very quick fashion and after not that much time in market. The ability to mitigate risk through experimentation has never been higher. And the best brands are going to be the ones that, that, that use that to their advantage.